Hey everyone, my name is Jess and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be making an eye mask inspired by one of my favorite movies, Breakfast at Tiffany's. You can choose to make your mask out of almost any fabric and I'll also be sharing tips on embroidery and piping if you'd like to add those to your mask. So let's get started. First, start by gathering your supplies. You'll need an eighth yard or a fat quarter of some main fabric. Some types of fabrics you could use are cork fabric, faux leather, faux fur, quilt cotton, flannel, terry cloth, fleece, knit, sequins, linen, basically any type of fabric that you want. You'll also need an eighth yard or a fat quarter of lining. The lining fabric will be against your face, so make sure you choose a fabric that will feel comfortable to you and is easy to clean, such as quilt cotton, flannel, terry cloth, fleece, knit, or linen. You'll also need a piece of fleece batting or foam. Either option will work. The foam will be a little bit stiffer, so it just depends on what's comfortable to you. You'll need a piece of knit elastic. You can choose the width of the elastic depending on if you want a thin or a wider strap. If you'd like to add piping to the outer edges of your mask, you'll need some pre-made bias tape piping. If you'd like to add embroidery to your project, I recommend using a metallic thread. Sulky offers some great options. I chose to use their original metallic thread for my embroidery on this project. If you decide to add embroidery, you will need some stabilizer. You can use either a tearaway or a cutaway for this project. Some great options are Sulky Sticky Plus, Sulky Stiffy, Tear Easy, Cutaway Plus, or Soft and Sheer. I'll go into depth more about those stabilizers later in this video. If you're using a more lofty fabric or sequence, you might also want a water-soluble stabilizer such as Sulky Solvi, and I'll cover that later on as well. Also, you'll find a helpful list of notions in the pattern. You'll need scissors, polyester thread. My favorite is Sulky Poly Deco, which is a 40 weight polyester thread. Sewing clips such as Clover Wonder Clips, pins, chalk or a removable pen, a point turner, basting spray such as Sulky KK2000 or 505 spray, a stiletto, a zipper foot, a Teflon foot, and a piping foot. Download the free eye mask pattern from sallytomato.com and follow the cutting instructions. Remember, when you print a PDF pattern, it's important to print at 100% or actual size. You'll need to cut one piece from your main fabric, one piece from your lining fabric, and one piece from either your fleece or your foam. If you'd like to add embroidery to your project, I'm going to share a few tips on how to do so. We're going to hoop our stabilizer, adhere our fabric to the stabilizer, embroider the design, then tear away the stabilizer. There are two types of tearaway stabilizers that work great for embroidering on thicker fabrics or specialty fabrics such as cork, faux leather, faux fur, terry cloth, and sequins. Those two types of stabilizers are Sulky Sticky Plus and Sulky Stiffy. Otherwise, for this project, you could use a cutaway stabilizer such as Sulky Cutaway Plus. If you're using a thinner or more stretchy fabric such as cotton, fleece, flannel, knit, or linen, you'll want to use a sulky tear easy or soft and sheer. After selecting a stabilizer, hoop one piece nice and taut by tightening the hand screw. Thread your machine with a polyester embroidery thread such as sulky poly deco or original metallic thread. Also, make sure you have an embroidery bobbin thread wound onto your bobbin. Attach the hoop to the machine. For this project, there are two designs to choose from, glamour eyelashes or whimsy eyelashes. Select a design and load it into your machine. The first stitch sequence will sew an outline of our project. If you're using Sticky Plus, remove the hoop from the machine, then lightly score the paper of the stabilizer inside the outline and tear away the paper. Place your main fabric right side up inside the outline and reattach your hoop to the machine. If using a tearaway such as Stiffy or Tear Easy or a cutaway, spray the wrong side of your main fabric and position right side up inside the outline. If you're using a lofty fabric or sequence, brush the fabric in the direction you want it to go, then place a layer of Sulky Sulvi stabilizer on top of your fabric. This will help define your embroidery and prevent it from sinking into your fabric. Stitch the remaining embroidery. 
I'm using an 8012 embroidery needle. If you're using metallic thread, slow down your machine to help prevent the chance of your thread breaking. Remove your hoop from the machine. Remove your project from the hoop by loosening the hand screws. Gently tear away or cut away the stabilizer. And if applicable, wash away the topping stabilizer. Now that our embroidery is complete, we'll move on to the optional piping. If you'd like to add pre-made bias piping to your project, align the raw edges of the piping around the raw edge of your fabric with right sides together. I recommend using a piping foot. If you use a zipper foot to attach the piping, you will likely need to adjust your needle to the left or right so it's lined up with the existing stitching on the piping. Start sewing about one inch in from the tail end of the piping. A piping foot makes the piping much easier to attach because the foot has a groove underneath to help guide it as you sew. I'm just using the narrow foot that came with my machine to attach the piping. When you sew any curves, one tip is to shorten your stitch length to create a smoother line. Stop sewing about one inch from where you started at the beginning of the piping. Use the scissors to snip the raw edge of the piping along any curved edges to help it lay flatter and stay even with the raw edge of your fabric. At this point, you can use your favorite method for joining the ends of the piping, or you can follow my method, which I'm about to show you. Fold back the piping where you started. Trim the tail end of the piping flush with your starting point. Use a seam ripper to remove the stitching from the beginning end and expose the cord inside the piping. Trim the cord flush with your starting point and fold the short raw edge of the beginning end about a half inch or three eighths inch to the wrong side. Insert the tail end in between the folded edge to join the two pieces. Continue sewing to attach the rest of the piping. The pattern calls for the elastic to be 14 inches in length. Measure your head to make sure the elastic strap will fit correctly once attached to your eye mask. Note that you're going to lose about 3 8 inch on each side of the elastic and the eye mask for the seam allowance. You want the elastic to be fitted, but not too tight. Take your main fabric with right sides together, center and clip the elastic in place. Repeat on the other side of the mask so the straps are evenly placed on both sides. Baste each side of the elastic to the fabric a quarter inch from the raw edge. Place the batting or foam against the wrong side of the main fabric. Then layer the lining right sides together with the main fabric. Make sure the elastic is tucked in between the layers so it stays out of the seam allowance. Sew all the way around the mask, leaving about two or three inches open at the top along the flat edge. Use a piping foot or a zipper foot again with your needle in the same position as before to conceal the raw edge of the piping. Again, a piping foot is much easier because it's designed to guide the piping underneath. If you're using a zipper foot, make sure you're keeping an even seam allowance along your previous stitching. After sewing, trim the seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch wide. Do not trim the seam allowance from the opening along the top. Use the opening to turn the eye mask right side out then use the curved end of a point turner to smooth out the piping and curved edges of the mask. Take your time to finger press the edges and create a smooth line. Fold the seam allowance at the opening inside the mask. Use sewing clips or pins to hold the opening closed and press with an iron if you're able to or necessary depending on your fabric choices. Top stitch an eighth inch around the entire mask, which will also close the turning opening. You may want to use a zipper foot and switch back to your metallic thread for this step. Give your mask a final press or steam with your iron and you're ready to put it to use. These eye masks are simple and fun to make. They pair great with our Breakfast at Tiffany's inspired tassel earrings. Make a set for yourself, then buy some furniture and give your cat a name. Share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Happy sewing!